Wadi Hanifa is one of the most important natural features of Arabia. In the olden days, it was called the Ard, or Ard al-Yamama. The Hanifa Valley stretches over 120 kilometers through the heart of Arabia. Its importance lies in the fact that it is a source of life, surrounded by the desert. The Wadi is part of a network of more than 40 main valleys and dozens of ravines, which feed it with rich soil and flood water flowing from an area of more than 4,000 square kilometers. The valley has become a fertile agricultural land where wells, springs and water sources are found in abundance. The earliest relics unearthed here date back to around 3,500 BC. Ancient Arabian tribes settled here and made the Wadi their home. Among its famous ancient cities is Hajr al-Yamama, and among the tribes, Tasim and Jadiz were most famous in the second and third centuries AD. The Banu Hanifa tribe, from which the valley gets its name, settled in the Wadi several centuries before the advent of Islam. In the Islamic era, the area became increasingly important as Yamama became famous for its rich agriculture. The cities of the valley became one of the provinces of the Islamic State and a witness to the glorious history of Islam. The most famous cities of the valley were El Layena, El Jebela, Manfuha, and El Hayya. In the middle of the Islamic 8th century, the city of Dir'iya became the most prominent city of the Nejd and Arabia. Dir'iya then became the capital of first Saudi state at the beginning of the 12th century, following the historic agreement between Imam Muhammad bin Saud, founder of first Saudi state, and Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Wahhab. بعد أن من الله على هذه البلاد بالملك المؤسس الموحد عبد العزيز بن عبد الرحمن آل سعود واستكمل توحيد البلاد وتأسيس الدولة منذ حوالي سبعين عام بدأت النهضة العمرانية والاقتصادية اللي عمت أرجاء المملكة ومن ضمنها طبعا مدينة الرياض هذا قاد إلى توسع كبير في مساحة المدينة وفي أنشطة الاقتصادية والعمرانية ولا شك أن هذا كان له تأثير وضغط سلبي كبير على الوادي شأن أي تنمية سريعة في أي مكان في العالم لا بد أن يصحبها الكثير من السلبيات Since the 1970s, the rapid growth and development of the city of Riyadh 
together with the absence of appropriate regulations for the protection of the valley, had a damaging impact on Wadi Hanifa, as it became a source of construction materials and a dumping ground for waste. An increase in damaging activities in the wider river basin created environmental imbalances in the valley. Pits opened up in the ground and the life-providing ravines filled with rubbish. Residential neighborhoods in the ravines expanded without any regard to the surrounding floodplain. Public utilities sprung up randomly. Waste from construction materials also piled up in the valley, as well as burnt rubbish, hydrocarbon waste, and the refuse from industrial activities, slaughterhouses, tanneries, and other factories that set up in the valley. يأتي معها مخلفات صلبة أو مخلفات كيماوية أو أصباغ فكانت طبيعة الحال ترمى في الوادي. The water system became disrupted as a result of the depletion of groundwater and pollution. Highly toxic marshes and brackish ponds and lakes had formed. Vegetation became depleted. The quality of urban life deteriorated the traditional rural population was badly affected and agricultural activity decreased. Over time, the situation in the wadi deteriorated and these problems became a serious health and environmental hazard. والمحك هنا ليس طبعا في نشوء السلبيات اللي تتولد من التنمية السريعة المحك هنا في كيف نواجه ونجابه هذه السلبيات The Ariad Development Authority under the chairmanship of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Abdulaziz had taken up responsibility of planning the long-term comprehensive development of the city of Riyadh. It is also working on coordinating agencies active in the city in order to guarantee the successful progress of all planning operations within an overall vision for the future of the city. <laughs> عبر الخمسين عام القادمة وضعت خطط تنفيذية للعشرين عام القادمة والمخطط الاستراتيجي عني بكل قطاع التنمية قطاع التنمية العمرانية والاقتصادية والسكان والخدمات والإسكان والبيئة وغيرها وفق منظور شامل متكامل. The program for the development of Hanifa Valley is one of the environmental initiatives that falls under the umbrella of the strategic plan for the city of Riyadh. The Ariad Development Authority's decision to control the city of Riyadh's growth was taken in consideration of the valley's status as an environmentally sensitive area, in order to protect it and establish a positive balance between the valley and its urban surroundings. The High Commission for the Development of Ariad enforced urgent measures to remove the sources of pollution and most of the industrial activities halting removal of soil and stopping dumping waste, defining floodplain boundaries and limiting placement of utilities services, in addition to monitoring its environment and issuance of guidelines and regulations. In 2003, the High Commission produced the comprehensive master plan for the Wadi to be used as a rule for all future development. The rehabilitation project was the basis upon which the rest of the strategic plan was to be built.
The rehabilitation project covers an area of 80 kilometers from the north of Amaria Road to the south of Al Hayr. One of the main objectives of the project is to restore the valley back to its natural condition as an outlet for rainwater. It also aims to free the valley from pollutants and contaminants. In addition, it aims to promote the use of the valley after its rehabilitation as one of the open areas available to residents of the city for outdoor recreation. As a first step in the rehabilitation phase, the authority wanted to rid the valley of the waste which has disturbed its ecological balance and robbed it of its natural beauty. 10 million square meters of the valley were cleaned and half a million cubic meters of garbage and construction waste and soil saturated with toxic substances and harmful plants and weeds were removed. Then, work began on the reshaping of the geometry of the valley to control the drainage of permanently flowing waters, seasonal inundations and floodwaters. For this purpose, dangerous soil mounds in the main course of the valley were removed and the valley bed was properly leveled to ensure a permanent linear tilt towards the southern direction and a horizontal tilt towards the middle of the valley. The permanent water channel, which was constructed along the 57 kilometer distance from Erka in the north to the wetlands of El Hayer in the south, as part of a plan to drain stagnant waters. The sides of the channel were covered with stone and natural weirs were formed. A main water treatment plant was built in the Atega area where the flowing waters are subjected to an intensive round of bio-treatment before they flow through the channel towards the south. This station has now become an attractive addition to the valley. فكرة المعالجة الحوية بشكل بسيط هي هي محاولة لإيجاد سلسلة كاملة من من الدورة الغذائية لمجموعة من الكائنات المجهرية الدقيقة تنتقل إلى إلى أعلى من ذلك بحيث إنه الكائنات المجهرية الدقيقة تتغذى على المواد العضوية الموجودة في هذه المياه الملوثة من خلال وجود الإضاءة ودرجة الحرارة عندنا بالتالي تحول هذه المواد الكائنات الدقيقة إلى كائنات أكبر منها تتغذى عليها وبالتالي تستمر هذه الحلقة حتى تصل إلى الأسماك تتغذى على هذه الفطريات وغيرها وبالتالي أيضا ممكن الطيور تتغذى وممكن النباتات المحيطة في 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 الوادي تتغذى على هذه المواد الضارة وبالتالي المنتج النهائي أن يكون لدينا مياه نقية إلى درجة مقبولة بالإمكان استخدامها استخدام آمن مثل في الري أو في أغراض أخرى. The rehabilitation project also aimed to restore the natural beauty of the valley through the relocation of all the aerial networks of telephone and electricity lines underground over a distance of 30 kilometers, as well as conversion and replacement of all utility systems that were incompatible with the permanent water channels or with the required geometry for the flow of flood water. In order to serve the farms and the local traffic on both sides of the valley, a new network of roads was constructed, covering more than 42 kilometers, including more than 30 crossings and culverts at the intersection with the permanent water channel. The project also included the construction of more than 45 kilometers of footpaths, the roads and footpaths were provided with lighting and parking areas were constructed along the roads with prayer areas and toilets. An integrated system of branding and signage was developed, incorporating a series of public information and interpretive panels. As part of the environmental rehabilitation of the valley, nine zones have been identified and developed as public parks. These include areas that are on the valley and areas that overlook it from the higher ground alongside the valley. To restore the natural environment and beauty of the valley, the authority's rehabilitation project included a comprehensive planting scheme. 
appropriate and local species were used, which would maintain the valley's water balance, restore the vegetation cover, and enable the revegetation of wastelands. Suitable species were cultivated and mature trees transplanted from other areas of the valley, which would have been destroyed by urban expansion in accordance with the detailed landscape master plan. The works carried under the project of environmental rehabilitation of Hanifa Valley constitute a part of a much wider overall program. In the future, the projects envisage the development of other important sites for wildlife and flora in the Wadi. The area of the lakes of Al Hayar and upstream valleys and natural reserves in the regions of El Hayar, Laban and Haisia. The comprehensive plan for the development of Hanifa Valley was internationally recognized for its pioneering role in the field of environment and water resources management and development. The project has received worldwide recognition. In 2003, it was awarded the first prize by the Water Center in Washington, chosen from a short list of 75 projects submitted by 21 countries. In 2007, the project has also won the Golden Award from the International Awards for Livable Communities as the best project from amongst 160 projects submitted in the field of environment and water resources conservation. Here is the Hanifa Valley, beckoning with its natural beauty, plants and vegetation. It has now been restored to become a natural outlet for floodwaters and represents a strategic source of clean water for agricultural and industrial uses. Its natural resources now invite utilization and investments in the various fields of agriculture, tourism and leisure. نجعل الأجيال الجديدة والناشئة والشباب الصغار والبنات يعرفون بأن البيئة هي ثروتنا الأساسية وأننا البيئة حباها الله لنا لكي نستفيد منها ولكن استفادة منها تتعظم كل ما حافظنا عليها متعة مناسب في خصوصية للعوائل ومن أحسن شيء يعني تلقى العائلة راحتها لما تجهن بيئة جميلة والله حلو تغيير جو مع العائلة الهواء الطبيعي كورونا شرير كأنه الآن يعني تبعث فيه الحياة من جديد بهذا المشروع العظيم We will not jeopardize the future of coming generations for the comfort of the present generation. Similarly, we will not impose suffering on present generation for the comfort of the future generations. We will create a balance between the present and the future for the benefit of all. King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz